Hi, my name is Albert Baker. I'm the Global Tax Policy Leader for Deloitte. Uh, today is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016, uh, the day of the Liberal budget. This was the first uh, new budget of the Liberal government. We spent the day today with some of my colleagues uh, over at uh, the budget lockup. What the documents show uh, from a macroeconomic point of view is a uh, deficit um, for budget 2016 of about $29 billion. Uh, that will gradually reduce to about $14 billion over the course of the next four years. In terms of the debt to GDP ratio, uh, we're looking at a 32.5% um, uh, debt to GDP ratio in budget 2016, gradually reducing to roughly 31% over the course of the next four years. These numbers are not a huge surprise uh, because the government did a lot of foreshadowing of what the numbers would look like uh, in the weeks prior to the, to the budget. Uh, the numbers reflect uh, a slow economy uh, and a government that's willing to do stimulus spending to try to improve the, the growth in the economy. Uh, that stimulus spending will be to the tune of about $120 billion. Uh, some, a couple of examples of the, uh, the spending that's going to uh, take place. Uh, there's about $2 billion uh, that will be spent uh, over the course of a three-year period on innovation, and that'll be directed towards post-secondary institutions uh, relative to innovation. And there'll be about a $3 billion amount spent over a five-year period um, on climate change. So I'd like to address uh, some of the corporate measures that were covered in the uh, budget. Uh, no surprise uh, that the Canadian government did announce that they are adopting the country-by-country country reporting. Uh, this measure came out of the work that the, uh, of the so-called BEPS project, uh, that the, this is base erosion and uh, profit shifting, uh, that the OECD and the G20 have been working on for the last two years. Uh, they issued the recommendations in October. Uh, another one of the BEPS recommendations uh, that they uh, announced adoption of uh, was the spontaneous transfer of rulings uh, between Canada and other jurisdictions. Uh, and a third measure that they, ado they announced adoption of was around uh, treaty abuse. Uh, this measure uh, likely takes off the table a treaty shopping measure uh, uh, that was proposed in the uh, 2014 budget. Uh, this measure will likely uh, be the measure that takes, uh, that takes its place. Lastly, relative to BEPS, uh, they announced that the uh, CRA would be adopting uh, the transfer pricing um, uh, guidelines uh, that are coming out of the BEPS project. Interestingly, they did say that in the government's view uh, that the CRA has already been applying that methodology uh, in prior years. Another corporate tax measure that the budget addressed were certain anti-avoidance rules. One of those rules deals with cross-border surplus stripping. A second change uh, is regarding back-to-back -back loans. Again, there's going to be expansion of the rules. Back-to-back uh, -back loans will now include loans to uh, shareholders. And back new back-to-back -back rules will be introduced to cover payments of royalties and rents. A third area where there's going to be expansion of the anti-avoidance rules deals with debt parking uh, and uh, debt parking uh, where there is a foreign exchange gain will now be covered under the debt parking rules. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague David Mason and David is going to cover some of the changes in the budget relative to individuals and private companies. David. Thanks, Albert. I want to talk to you tonight about some of the changes that occurred in the uh, federal budget today that affect small business owners. The biggest change and the biggest surprise to me was the fact that they are not going to continue with the uh, reduction in tax rates that were promised by the previous government. The rate was 11%, was to drop to 9% over four years. First rate change occurred at the beginning of this year to 10.5% and then it was going to continue to drop. The government announced today they're not going to drop it down to 9%, it's going to remain at 10.5%. Uh, this will cost business owners money and they won't have as much to invest in growing their businesses. So kind of surprising, uh, particularly given what I thought the message from the government had been previously. On the other hand, there were some things that weren't in the budget that I expected. One of those things was I thought that they were going to change the rules applicable to professionals, those who had doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountants, who had corporations. And that's the, all they have in that corporation is themselves or maybe one other person and earning uh, business income and they were paying tax at the low rate. There was talk even leading up to the election that this wasn't fair and that this was going to be eliminated, but it wasn't. They didn't make that change today and that was a surprise to me. Another change that they've announced today is going to affect what's known as eligible capital property. This is intellectual property, goodwill that you might have acquired in, in, when you bought a business. 
Uh, previously, uh, it was taxed uh, three quarters of it. You got to write off at 7% per year. Now you're only going to write off 5%, but on 100% of it. The bigger change though is if you sell this kind of property. So previously, it was treated as business income. You could get the small business rate on some of that income. And otherwise, it was just treated as business income. You paid tax at 26% with including the provincial rate and then there was no further tax unless you paid out as a dividend. Now it's going to be taxed as a capital gain. So you're going to pay tax only on half of the gain, which is good, but you're going to have to pay what's known as refundable tax. So that means that if you don't pay it out to the shareholder, you're still going to pay the same amount of tax as if you had paid it out to them. Thanks, David. Overall, I think the government has produced a fiscally responsible budget uh, it does remain to be seen whether or not the stimulus spending will produce the growth results for Canada uh, that we're looking for and whether or not that will ultimately take us back to balanced budgets. Thank you for watching.